So good morning and thanks for coming to this talk. And I'll be presenting work about uh, in interactive systems and specifically distributed systems. And it's joint work with Ken McMillan, Arjit Panda, Muli Sagiv, and Sharon. So I'll start by highlighting the main. So we have an application of verification to distributed systems. We also have a, a way to infinite state systems in a logic that allows a de decidable reasoning in spite of the infinite state space. And most interestingly, we have an interactive methodology to discover inductive invariants. And the motivation for this is techniques to discover inductive invariants because of the undecidability of them. They're fragile and they're bound to fail at some point. And in this work, we want to how can we interact with the user when this the work. And you can Uh, the set of reachable an inductive in and the most interesting ends in a state transitions from variant. So formalizing your challenge to figure out what exactly is how to find them automatically. Your system and you've uh, are specified looking undecided. Automatically. And this approach is Daphne, is to use an with the inductive environment, which makes sense for them. Or something like that. Narrow pack, you, 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 and you couldn't prove the if or not, and you're left with had a lot of success in improvers. So, with this approach. works quite but it's a huge effort you need to tell you about our approach with Ivy to handle quantified inductive invariants and is decidable And the other ingredient of our approach is how to 
a systematic way to let the user help them. Production that I'll explain soon. Offer the user automated help in finding protocol. So it's a protocol for electing a leader. Begin with, and the nodes want to, to communicate. And when a node gets a message, it compares the ID includes that it has the highest ID in the ring and becomes the leader. That the highest, uh, the node with the highest ID is the only. How we can do it with Ivy. In checking universal inductive invariants and between trying to get verification tasks to be decided. Attention was to uh, model the system state restrict how you can uh, how, how somehow we, we managed to to express very And you can read more about that in the paper. So it's for IDs and for nodes. And we have a twin relation over nodes. And it basically says that And see, then when you go on the ring from node A, you meet telling that models paths and not the direct, the immediate from nodes to their unique IDs. We model with this pending relation from between IDs and nodes and to model which nodes think that they are the leaders. And let me show you the code for the uh, protocol action. A very simple send action, which can happen for any node. And it just picks its uh, successor in the ring of n at pending at its successor. The, the other action is the receive action. And it can happen when, an, when, an, when there is an ID pending at a node. So the, the node compares the ID, the own ID, to the message. If they are equal, only if the message is strictly larger than the ID to its successor. So this command that I've successor actually translates to a universal form and the successor from the, the between relation. And, and we can do that within the restricted model. And the assertion that we want to verify for this protocol is that whenever there is a leader, it has the maximal ID. So if node X 
any node with a higher ID. Okay, so let me show you a run of the graphical notation that I'm going to use for the, for the verification. So this is an initial state of the protocol. You see three nodes, and these are their IDs. The ID of node one, the ID of node two, and the ID of node three. And this is, so this ID is less than this ID, and this ID is less than this ID. And the first action that can happen, it's ID, and, and this ID now becomes pending at node one. The second action that can happen is that node one receives the ID of node three, and because it's to its successor, which is node two, when node three will receive this, this message, it Okay, now for, I'll show you in this uh, system. So the assertion that we want that if, if you're a leader, then you have the maximal ID. Assertion by this pattern, which is actually a partial don't specify anything about the ring topology of this node or about pending packets in the network a node which is a leader and another node that has a higher ID. And this, this, this uh, graph actually denotes other system states which it, ex it excludes. It contains it as a pattern. It also excludes this, of this node so it can be either leader or not leader. higher with more uh, nodes. So for example, this state contains this as a, as a sub node is the leader, even though this node has a higher ID. So these are the states that it excludes. What about the any state that does not have this pattern? So for example, no leader here. This state is also okay because the leader has the highest ID. And similarly for is the node with the highest ID, so it does not contain this bad pattern. What we really want to do is to verify that all of the reachable states are within this set. So the way we do it is we usually that proves this property. But the big question is how variant, how can we find it without knowing it? We've been Ivy for that. So the with a set of states that contains all the sets except for the bad states of the system. And then of this candidate inductive invariant, and as you it fully in a fully automated way, and sure enough induction. So we'll get some state here that state outside of the invariant. At this point, we want to look at this counterexample to induction and to somehow generalize from it and come up with a strengthening that we can strengthen the invariant and exclude. And after we strengthen the invariant, we've excluded many more, many more states. And we check inductiveness again. We might get another counterexample to induction. We need to generalize again and continue this process until we've, come, we've reached an inductive invariant. And the key challenge for this process is the generalization. How do you go from this counterexample or from this one to what you want to exclude? And our uh, key idea for this in Ivy is to, to put the user at this in the loop of invariant inference and generalization. And we have a methodology for interaction that I will now demonstrate. Uh, for, for, so for our uh, leader protocol, the invariant that excludes this pattern, that, namely that the and we get this counterexample to induction. So you see here a state in which no one is the leader pattern, but there is a pending, uh, this ID is pending at this node. 
transition, when this node receives this ID, it becomes a leader, even though it doesn't have the This state does contain this bad pattern. So this bad pattern So now the user has to look at this, uh, think about how to uh, strengthen the inductive invariant. There is some key property of the protocol that are invariant. This property is that only the highest ID can be pending at its so we want to communicate this information to the system. And the way we do that is we have a graphical user. User choose which relations are relevant to this generalization. So for example, the topology of the ring is generalization that we're after. So we can remove it. Graph. Similarly, the fact that these two nodes are not leaders is also not relevant to the generalization. So we make that go away, and now we've generalized from this particular CTI to it. So before we add this pattern to the inductive invariant and get rid of all of these states, we might want to have some, uh, sorry? So this operation that we did here, we call it a projection. So we project this relations. And before we, we, we add this bad pattern, we might want to get some sanity check from the system. Really, this pattern is not reachable from the initial state. And we can ask Ivy to do that, and this is again decided. The proof that this pattern does not occur in any state reachable state. So we're happy, we, we, it makes sense for counter example. So we add it to the inductive environment. Now we, we check inductiveness again. It contains the two bad patterns, that their leader have the maximal ID, and that only the highest ID can be. Again, we get a counterexample to induction, and this is a more interesting. And as you can see, in this state, so no one is a leader, and no ID, it does not, it's not excluded from our invariant yet. Two is pending at node one, and it's higher than when when this node receives this ID, it will ID is self-pending, even though there is another node. So there is still some key feature of the protocol that are. So we have to look at this example and think about it. Yet in the inductive invariant is the fact that this ID could not have bypassed this ID, which is high. A message cannot bypass a node with a higher ID. And we want to communicate this intuition to the system. We might try the, exactly the same projection that we did topology and project away the leader relation. This results in this bad pattern. But now, when we run BMC to check if it within three steps, we actually get a counterexample true is that we've actually excluded some reachable state. We don't want to do that. So we think again and, and relation is relevant to the generalization that way. So once we project to this in our projection, we get this conjecture and we prove that it's not reachable up to three states from the initial state. And another thing we can get from the system is to take the unsat core, get a slightly more general uh, pattern that doesn't say anything about the ID of this node because it's not really is higher or lower than the other IDs. The only two IDs that matter are the fact that it's lower than the ID of this node. So inductive invariant. And now, okay, so we add it to the inductive invariant, and I want to now show you what states we excluded by adding this bad pattern. Enough, we excluded this bad pattern with this state, CTI, but because of the nature of the modeling, we also excluded states with many more. The between relation captures paths in the so even though in, in our the in the state that we 
node one and two. So in the state we started with node two, we also exclude neighbors as long as the ring orientation is you reach node two before you reach node three. Of the way we model the system that allows us to do this. In that, the inductiveness of this invariant that contains these get a proof that it's inductive. So we verified the and the way this looks graphically is that with this uh, safety property and all of these states are bad we found out that it's not a, a, an inductive in it by, by finding out two more patterns state and all of these states that don't contain any of states are our inductive invariant they so they contain they do not intersect the bad states and most importantly they have the consecution property so whenever we, we start from a transition we only end up in this in a state which is in this set there are no transitions and this invariant because it obtain, it was obtained user makes a lot of sense and if you're actually it, it could be very helpful for you to know sense so say if you're thinking of a new optimization or you want to think of, an, of a new version of, a, of the helpful to know what is exactly is the, the invariant and by having this interactive methodology for with invariants that actually make sense for the user when a generation technique might generate something which is I want to say something about the completeness and the complexity of in any generalization step we strengthen the clause so if there is a Variant and say that it has NCNF clauses. Optimal user could obtain this invariant with N. So if the user is not optimal, the user might make generalizations that are not, or, or even generalizations that are not true. And in this case, it might require more iterations, tracking to get rid of wrong conjectures that the user made. So here are some protocols that we've uh, verified with IV. The most is interesting features of this table is is manageable. You don't need hundreds of generalization steps, and these of should keep this number manageable. And two interesting examples are comparisons of verifying something in IV compared to Verdi, which is based on Croc, and compared to Ironfleet, which is based on Daphne. From discussions I had with both the Verdi team and the Iron Fleet team, we, it really seems like this uh, to a much lower uh, verification effort and a much faster uh, process of discovering. And uh, we're also working on verifying, and, but this is not finished yet. Another perspective on, on, uh, that I want to give you on this work is this design space for verification versus automation. So you can uh, think of uh, that has, a, so it has ultimate to prove anything, but it has almost no automation invariant and proves and, and solves that it is inductive. In a system like Daphne, the active invariant, but the, the system should get problem, but because the underlying logic is undecidable, it might end up in some matching loop and then hints or to tweak the invariant somehow to make On the other extreme, we have fully automated static analysis in which both this, the system comes up with proof, so it's, it's very automated, but it's proof system to prove rich properties and expressive properties and what we're trying to do with IV is to explore 
where the deduction problem is solved completely automatically. Finding the inductive invariant, we have a, a user is in the loop, but the system also with the sanity checks and with a little more uh, auto. Okay. So our approach for verifying has two key ingredients. One is a restricted makes certain verification tasks and most important invariants makes this task decidable. Restricted, uh, or even though it's a restricted uh, uh, model, many systems by using smart access for the ring that we reason about the paths in the ring. Very encouraged about. The other key ingredient active generalization and, and interactive invariance, which is interactive based on interactive generalization, as you've seen. With protocols. Now, some insights that we've gained along the process intuition and the machine analysis really complement each other. There has an intuition that leads to good generalization. And finding corner cases where the user's intuition is wrong. The hope of leading to, to so the, the, this interactive process, its intuition about, about the protocol, and the, actually be useful for people who design protocols. And you can also uh, download Ivy. I encourage you to play with it and tell, tell us what you think. So... All right, questions? A uh, question about the modeling language, though. Are you fixing that you gave? Are those fixed ahead of time? No. So, whatever relations you need for your uh, for the problem you just guarantees on you know the the fact that the ordering on pattern a any state containing this pattern would be a, a violation. Are there any specific properties on those relations? Or? So examples we have a different number of relations you use those relations and the way you update them so we prevent you from putting any quantifier alternation axioms that you have on these relations to make everything decidable there's no specific properties like associativity or something like that that no so or commutativity or transitivity so there are some properties that you cannot express, but uh, number of relations or number of function symbols. It's great work um, putting the user in the loop, but it almost sounds too good to be only interaction. The only information the user has to provide is basically to exclude those relations. Generalization. So if it's already like from the user, it just it's like intuitively sounds like you could like enumerate um, all this combination. Yes. And also, um, it kind of seems to be comes from the way you model the problem in the first place because between relation you use next relation, it wouldn't generate. Even more user intuition comes from the modeling relations from the from the counter examples so uh, for the first one so it we are gaining a lot from the user because abilities the problem is that when every generalization to prove that in the inductive environment and this is a practical uh, explanation and the theoretical even though the, the specification language is restricted, so there is no hope of solving it uh, automa fully automatically. It solves all instances. 
And for the second point, it's a, it's a very good point. And this is what we judge our domain specific axioms. And it's really, it does more uh, clever uh, modeling from the uh, somehow that this uh, cleverness can be reused axioms for the between relation. We can use that for any protocol that works this leader reaction protocol. Okay, and the work. I was wondering whether the graphical nature was enough. So you showed us one case where you could click and unclick relations. Core says, okay, well, you can just remove something, you know. So I had two questions. One, is the interface flexible enough so that the want to do? And um, that you would really need to go and like write formulas you can't somehow do in this. Okay, so for the first part, I've, I've simplified it a lot for the slide. It does want to pick from a list which facts you want. And it, so we are we'll go back and write some uh, formula. But the plan is that when you doing the interactive process, you realization, but a new ghost relation or, or have any so this you have to go back and type in some some um, but we so for, for the generalization part for the so in, in the example you showed the how when uh, you can use bounded model checking to find that uh, what happens if your bound is not big enough it. What what does it look like for the user? Yes. And then, so this is exactly where this. Say that you did some generalization, which is true up to. Actually violated at seven steps. So you add it to your inductive. You're going to have to prove that, and you'll end up coming up with. That you'll face this. You'll face this CTI, and you'll realize. Is too strong. This property that I thought holds doesn't hold. Also lets you remove this conjecture and and so, and backtrack. Thanks. So uh, so this interesting result in like questions that you would ask the oracle if if the like CNF for instance or some other logical class. I'm wondering what, like, where this result on the bullet point, like, this your result, or is this like, a, it's, it looks like maybe the result or with the CNF, uh, the second so, bullet point. A generalization a method, generalization from CTIs, it's it's a pretty straightforward result mm -hmm. that whenever if you so if you have the and, and, and whenever you get a CTI, you you generalize. Then you'll never, you'll always get a CTI that lets you exclude a new clause, and it is uh, so. It is very interesting to synthesis and to uh, some complexity notions that, uh, but we haven't quite been able to pin it. One of the reasons is that the space of invariance is infinite because we have no universal quantifiers. Like in the last bullet point, for instance, if you assume a bound on the on the answers that the user gives you, okay, mm -hmm. up to k, then you can, uh, based on this bound, you can say how many generalization steps you so need. So up to k wrong end. That's very interesting. It's an interesting point to think about. 